this is where it begins. A place where she can dive into her dreams and swim against the current to reach her goal. It is a starting point of a journey to explore uncharted territories, to use new knowledge for the best of mankind, Immersing in sustainable lifestyle Where you can feel the breeze on your skin It's times like this that makes you feel alive A time to create A time to capture precious moments Dreams are no longer just a dream, but the beginnings of a new reality. This is where I harness my potential. This is where I explore possibilities. This is where I expand my mind. This is where our story begins. This is Eddie City.
Hello, everyone. Welcome to our second series, Edit City Happy Clinics. I'm Wen Jing from the Edit City Students at Night team. I'll be the host for today. It's so nice to meet you all here. Okay, so today's session is going to be all what we need the most during this time because of MCO period and rising COVID cases. Yes, you are right. It's all going to be about mental health. But fright not, it's definitely going to be a fun field sessions as we do have a cover sessions later. And also we will announce the winner for our happy video competition at the end of these sessions. Okay, first of all, let's welcome our main guest speaker today, Dr. Chai Wenjia. She's a lecturer from the Department of Social Science from Raffles University, Malaysia on board with us here today. Moreover, today's sessions will be moderated by Ms. Adeline Rahman. She's a representative of Adelstein's Academy and a first certified mental first aider to discuss the topic faith or fictions to understand how the pandemic impacts our brain functions and mental health. So are you all going to listen to the sessions and get some information about mental health? I believe yes. So what are we waiting for? Let's put our hands together and welcome both of them. All right, the floor is yours, Miss Adeline. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction, Mango. I am honored to be invited as a moderator and be part of this program with our honorable speaker, Dr. Chai. Um, as introduced, my name is Idalin. I'm a, a consultant from Educity Academy and I'm certified mental health first aider. So, um, I'm so excited to kickstart the session, but before that, let me welcome all of you once again uh, to our second series of our Happy Clinic. I've been told that our audience today are not only from students from various universities, but also we have parents, we have teachers, we have professionals that are currently watching us. Thank you so much. All right. I believe the topic that we are going to discuss today is becoming more important and interesting, especially during this pandemic, because yeah, it suits our situation right now. So, um, fact or fiction, understand how the pandemic impacts brain function and mental health. So that's the topic that we are going to discuss today. That sounds interesting, doesn't it? So without further ado, let me introduce our speaker again, Dr. Chai Wenjia from Raffles University. Hello, Dr. Chai. Dr. Chai will talk uh, about our situation today, pandemic that could impact our brain and mental health. So let's hear from Dr. Chai whether is it fact or fiction. What do you think, guys? Over to you, Dr. Chai. Thanks, Adeline. Uh, and thanks, Mango, as well, the MC. Uh, very honored to be uh, invited here to join this seminar today. Uh, yeah, as introduced, I'm Chai Wenjia. I'm a lecturer of psychology at Raffles University. And yeah, as the current situation uh, how, has how our country right now is uh, being plagued by uh, this pandemic, uh, I'd like to talk about this topic that you can see here, uh, how uh, uh, the, what is that, what we call this, uh, the pandemic can impact our brain function or whether it, this, uh, it does impact brain function and uh, how it actually can uh, related to our mental health. Yeah, uh, and let me share my screen with you. Oops, so I think there's some technical issue here because I couldn't share screen. Uh, maybe I'll need some help from the technical team because from my side here, it says uh, disabled screen sharing. Or you, or if it's fine, uh, I think the uh, technical team can share my uh, presentation slide for me. Then. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. it works now. Sorry for the delay. Let me try again. Yeah. Okay, so like I've said just now, uh, we'll be talking about the topic. Uh, can the pandemic impact brain functions and mental health? Uh, separating fact from fiction. So uh, a lot of times when we talk about mental health, we tend to separate it out from uh, uh, the other organs in the brain or, or our physical health. But actually they are very related, very closely related. Therefore, I've included what we call brain functions or, or I've talked about the, I'll be talking about the function of the, uh, not the function, but this very important organ in the brain, uh, in the body, brain. So uh, contrary to popular belief, actually the brain controls all functions in the body. 
uh, I mean, a lot of times our physical, when we talk about physical health, we talk about our, our heart or our stomach, our uh, gastrointestinal system, uh, our lungs and all these things. But actually all these other organs, they are being controlled by this very important function, uh, important organ in your head, the brain. So the brain controls all functions in the body from breathing, yeah, just like what I said just now, for pumping uh, 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 the, the blood to all regions in your body, to even feeling, whether you want to feel hungry or, or feeling sleepy or feeling uh, uh, emotion, uh, feeling sad, feeling blue, feeling happy, feeling joy, all this actually brain plays a role here. The brain, our brain plays a role. So this very important organ in the head, uh, it weighs around 1.5 kilogram. Yeah, some facts for you. Uh, interesting uh, facts. 1.5 kilogram and 60% of it uh, is composed of fat. So this is actually a very fatty organ. And the remaining 40% is the combination of water, of uh, protein, carbohydrate, and salts. Yeah. So uh, we can got, that's why a very balanced diet uh, we can get, uh, is needed. We can get all these nutritional diets from the, uh, our, our food, yeah, from all this, uh, uh, what, is that? what do you call that? Uh, this uh, uh, nutrients, yeah, water, protein, carbohydrate, and salt. Uh, they, they made up your brain as well. So uh, when we talk about this, yeah, uh, apologize for this picture right here. It, it makes you uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, this is actually what a human, normal human brain would look like yeah, if you cut open your head and then you took out uh, uh, your brain and look at it. So this is like, uh, you can see all the blood vessels or the vascular system around. And you can see all this uh, uh, big lump of uh, fleshy color thing. What are these things? So like I said, 60% of these things, they are fats, right? And the remaining, uh, a, lot of it, a lot of it, they are proteins as well. And as we know, amino acid is the building blocks of proteins. And proteins or amino acids are also the building blocks of our cell. And cells, they are the building blocks of life. So uh, the brain is made up of what we call uh, neurons and glia. So just like other parts of uh, other other regions or other parts in your body, other other organs in your body, we have um, the cells. We uh, other parts of your body. I mean, your body is made out of cells. Not uh, this is your brain is included as well. Your brain is also made up of cells. And instead of calling them just uh, cells or brain cells and nerve cells, we commonly call it as uh, neurons and glia. So neurons, so neurons, they are, sorry. Neurons, they are the main uh, nerve cells that communicate. Well, for glia, they are the supporting cell that make sure your brain uh, fun functions at the optimum, under the optimum environment. Just to check, can you guys see my slides clearly here? Right. Okay, thanks. Yeah, I'm listening to the, uh, I mean, paying attention to the chat as well. Okay, so uh, moving further into this organ, uh, the brain, we have, if you look under the microscope, just like uh, what I showed you just now, this fatty, this uh, fatty organ here, if you look under the microscope, we can find all these different kinds of cells. So like I said, we have neurons and glio. So actually, this is actually an example of a neuron. So unlike other cells in the body, actually your neurons look a bit different. But of course, uh, it has uh, what the, the structures of other cells are. Just like uh, you have uh, a cell body, you have a nucleus, and then you have all this uh, mitochondria, all those things that you learn in biology class. But also they, they have these extra structures, uh, very specialized or exclusive structures called the dendrites. Yeah, these uh, spiny features here and the axons. And what are their functions? Actually, we will talk about it in the next slide. And then we also have uh, the supporting cells. Just now we mentioned uh, their glial, right? So supporting cells, this is one of it. There are six types, major types. Uh, this is what we call astrocyte. And this is an ependymal cell. So all these supporting cells, they make sure your brain uh, is under the optimum condition. Uh, uh, have like, uh, uh, is within the, what is that? The, the, uh, the correct pressure, under the correct uh, intracranial pressure, under the correct uh, temperature and all those things to make sure your neurons can function. Because actually neurons are the uh, major nerve cells that play a role here. Because yeah, what I want to talk about next is 
uh, the neurons, they talk to each other. So talk meaning they communicate just like how we communicate or we interact with uh, one another uh, among our human species. The neurons actually in your brain, they talk. And this is actually a very special function compared to other cells. Like I said, neurons just are like cells in the body as well. It's just that neurons are cells in your brain and in your uh, nervous system. So uh, they talk, meaning they communicate with each other. And you can see uh, how they communicate is that they pass down electrochemical signals. As you can see from this picture here, um, how they pass down electrochemical signals. Uh, this is like your uh, electrical circuit at home. Just like how you turn on the TV. Uh, sorry, when you turn on the, uh, when you switch on the socket, the, the plug point, and then, uh, then you switch on your TV, there will be electrical signals passing through the wire and so that your, your TV comes to life, and things like that, right? So similarly, actually, in your brain, the neurons, what they do is that they pass down all these uh, electrical signals from the dendrites to the axon within one neuron. So this is one neuron. And from there, when they want to communicate to another neuron, they will have to pass down chemical signals. So can you see uh, these tiny dots here? Actually, these, these things, they represent the... Uh, chemical signals, uh, the, the yeah, chemical messenger. So this is what is going on. When we say uh, your brain, a certain area is activated, that is because there are uh, information passing down. Or uh, when, let's say, when I'm talking to you guys here, actually a certain area in my brain is uh, working very hard. They are activated. Yeah, we have all these uh, electrical signals uh, going on in my brain. And even when you are thinking, actually, you are not doing anything because your brain works nonstop. So these activities, or what the neuronal activities, they are tightly regulated by the hormones and neurotransmitters. And actually, I know all these things that are quite biological right now, uh, biologically related right now. We will see how this actually can uh, play a role in our mental health. Yeah, uh, bear with me here. Yeah, if let's say you don't like biology, but I'm still thinking about all these biology terms here. Okay, yeah, to go back here, to go back to the brain activities, these are, they are tightly regulated by the hormones and neurotransmitters. So you have heard of, I believe all of you have heard of uh, hormones before. I mean, the term hormones, you know what they do, they are chemical, right, in the body. And neurotransmitter, so just now I mentioned that they are chemical signals, right? Actually, all these chemical signals, they are the neurotransmitter. So transmit, transmit signal, right? But they are in the, uh, uh, in the brain, uh, helping your neurons to transmit signal. So these activated activities, they are regulated by these, uh, the two major uh, chemical here in your brain, hormones and neurotransmitters. So for example, you have uh, a lot of you might have heard of, heard of this, the happy hormones, uh, endorphin and dopamine. When they say, oh, when you have a high level, of uh, hormones in your high level of hormones in your uh, uh, brain, you will feel uh, sorry, high levels of certain hormones, uh, for example, endorphin in your brain, you will feel happy. And uh, when you have a uh, dopamine, is also a type of a neurotransmitter, or when you have a high level of dopamine, uh, dopamine, dopamine's role is to regulate your mood and things like that. So these are actually true. Uh, what, what you have heard so far, if, let's say you have heard of uh, these, the, the, these statements before. Uh, endorphin and dopamine, they boost our mood and they actually make us feel good. So when you have high levels of all these, uh, what do you call it, happy hormones or the good hormones, then actually you will feel elated, uh, 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 you will feel uh, in, a, in a good mood. Yeah. So other than that, of course, there are other uh, hormones just like, or neurotransmitter like your uh, serotonin, uh, like your, uh, what else? Yeah, we will talk about all, all the, uh, the different types later on. So what I try to bring up, bring up here is that uh, we act on the environment because as you can see, our behavior will affect the brain chemistry or uh, the, the release of chemistry in the brain. If let's say uh, environmental, of course, sometimes when you are faced with a very stressful situation, uh, this is like the environment is giving you stress, right? You're in a very stressful situation. You feel uh, stressed out. Then your body will have to adapt to this change. To, to, to your environment here. So your brain will release uh, maybe something to do with the stress hormone yeah, uh, to regulate or to, to prepare your body to face this stressful situation. So we act on the environment, meaning our brain, uh, our behavior uh, can affect our brain chemistry. 
sorry, and the environment can also act uh, can also act on us. So this is like a feedback loop. At the same time, when your the environment dictate how you should behave, but your behavior or uh, uh, your action can really can influence your brain chemistry to uh, make sure that you uh, what is that act uh, appropriately to the current situation. So of course, uh, circumstances currently they are uncertain, unpredictable. If we talk, well, if we want to go back to this uh, pandemic here, uh, to relate this to uh, how our uh, uh, the, the year long or almost two years long of uh, this uh, COVID situation, it can be uncertain, unpredict unpredictable, worrisome, and stressful. I believe all of you here can uh, relate how things have changed for you. Yeah, uh, we have, have to. Yeah, like currently. Uh, Last time you won't actually have this many webinars online, but right now, yeah, we uh, have all this webinar online learning, and we are stuck home. You have to stay away from people. So with uh, social distancing, with all this uh, movement restraint, we are not supposed to move around and interact or physical interaction with people to stop the uh, infection. And then uh, there are fear of infection and things like that. All this, uh, all, all these negative consequences on all these negative impacts currently. So how do we cope? Yeah. So of course, we try our best to adapt, just like how in the uh, previous slide, we talked about how our brain is adaptive and then uh, we act on the environment, the environment also act on, acts on us. So of course, when we are adapting, our brains will try to adapt to this. Our brains try to adapt as well. So we act fine. We make new routine. We try to find uh, what we call this normal, new normal is that Okay, since right now uh, we can't go out at all, so let's just do online learning. And you will see this online learning as uh, what we call the new normal. And your brain works very hard to make sure you achieve that. Meaning, your brain works very hard to make sure that you manage to adapt to the current situation right now. From last time when you get to go around or just mingle around with friends, go out socializing, go to restaurants or cafe hopping and all these things. Uh, right now you have to stay home, you have to make your own meals and all these things. So all, of course your brains, if, if you're not doing that, actually you have been quite successful at adapting because your brain is working, doing all the works to make sure uh, with all these uh, activities, to make sure that you can adapt. Yeah. So, but of course what we know is that what is new is not necessarily normal. And uh, when things are not normal, then you will be unpredictable, uncertain, right? There are all the uncertainties. So we can become anxious and loaded with stress. And how does this actually affect your brain? Uh, I will let this. Are you sleeping restlessly, feeling irritable or moody, forgetting little things, and feeling overwhelmed and isolated? Don't worry, we've all been there you're probably just stressed out. Stress isn't always a bad thing. It can be handy for a burst of extra energy and focus, like when you're playing a competitive sport or have to speak in public. But when it's continuous, the kind most of us face day in and day out, it actually begins to change your brain. Chronic stress, like being overworked or having arguments at home, can affect brain size, its structure, and how it functions right down to the level of your genes. Stress begins with something called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, a series of interactions between endocrine glands in the brain and on the kidney, which controls your body's reaction to stress. When your brain detects a stressful situation, your HPA axis is instantly activated and releases a hormone called cortisol, which primes your body for instant action. But high levels of cortisol over long periods of time wreak havoc on your brain. For example, chronic stress increases the activity level and number of neural connections in the amygdala, your brain's fear center. And as levels of cortisol rise, electric signals in your hippocampus, the part of the brain associated with learning, memories, and stress control, deteriorate. The hippocampus also inhibits the activity of the HPA axis, so when it weakens, so does your ability to control your stress. That's not all, though. Cortisol can literally cause your brain to shrink in size. Too much of it results in the loss of synaptic connections between neurons and the shrinking of your prefrontal cortex, 
the part of your brain that regulates behaviors like concentration, decision-making, judgment, and social interaction. It also leads to fewer new brain cells being made in the hippocampus. This means chronic stress might make it harder for you to learn and remember things, and also set the stage for more serious mental problems like depression and eventually Alzheimer's disease. The effects of stress may filter right down to your brain's DNA. An experiment showed that the amount of nurturing a mother rat provides its newborn baby plays a part in determining how that baby responds to stress later in life. The pups of nurturing moms turned out less sensitive to stress because their brains developed more cortisol receptors, which stick to cortisol and dampen the stress response. The pups of negligent moms had the opposite outcome and so became more sensitive to stress throughout life. These are considered epigenetic changes, meaning that they affect which genes are expressed without directly changing the genetic code. And these changes can be reversed if the moms are swapped. But there's a surprising result. The epigenetic changes caused by one single mother rat were passed down to many generations of rats after her. In other words, the results of these actions were inheritable. It's not all bad news, though. There are many ways to reverse what cortisol does to your stressed brain. The most powerful weapons are exercise and meditation, which involves breathing deeply and being aware and focused on your surroundings. Both of these activities decrease your stress and increase the size of the hippocampus, thereby improving your memory. So don't feel defeated by the pressures of daily life. Get in control of your stress before it takes control of you. Okay. So what this video tries to bring out, the very important part is how stress, especially chronic, chronic meaning uh, prolonged, prolonged stress can uh, take a toll on your brain. So uh, when we talk about stress, if you recall, I don't know if it is lost and uh, if you have followed through the video, uh, we have this cortisol, right? The stress hormone. Just now I talked about hormones and neurotransmitter. I hope you still remember that, yeah? Yeah, your memory should be still functioning, you know, your brain, okay? Yeah, so cortisol is the stress hormone. When you, your stress, the stress is prolonged, they, uh, uh, cortisol is released when one feels stress, when one feels stress, right? So when your stress is prolonged, it can linger or stay in the brain. And therefore, as, can, as you can see from the video just now, when we talked about how it influenced the different regions, but amygdala, hippocampus, all these uh, different brain regions, it can affect the, your concentration, your memory, or even uh, how we social, so, uh, interact with each other uh, to have social interaction. So uh, some of you might notice uh, throughout the pandemic, I feel like my memory is getting worse or uh, I couldn't really concentrate. And you think, is that because um, my, my mental health is deteriorating or what is it? But a lot of things here, what we say can be uh, uh, traced back to your brain chemistry. Yeah, just like what uh, it shows in the video. So uh, another thing is that when we talk about social interaction, yeah, I want to make a point here. We are actually social beings, uh, what we call uh, social animals. So we need to socialize actually. So maintaining a social network is critical. And from the, uh, the, the neuroscience point of view, when we look into how this relates to the brain, uh, we have specialized circuitry in the brain. Just now I mentioned our neurons talk to each other, so it's like an electrical circuit, right? So we call it circuitry. So the brain has specialized circuitry to meet such purpose. And this is what we call the social brain network. Yeah, so you don't think that, oh, actually it's fine. I just stay home. I don't have to interact with people. Uh, let's just uh, 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 play my games or do my reading. Yeah, as long as I'm still surviving, I can survive, things like that. But actually, if you don't interact, uh, your brain, these areas, yeah, uh, yeah, these are the social brain networks. And some of it, uh, yeah, you have different regions. As you can see, social perception attributions can be uh, somewhere around here and then somewhere in the frontal area. Yeah, so this brain network, if let's say you don't use it, you could lose it. So this is either use it or lose it. So uh, if you don't maintain uh, social interaction, if you don't uh, uh, continue make sure that your brain is uh, 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 getting all the stimulations it needed, connections could be lost and your brain actually could shrink. Uh, brain could shrink by this, we mean uh, some volume losses. Actually, they have been doing studies and they looked into how actually a pandemic or not even a pandemic, just like environment can change the brain, brain volume especially. 
So maybe they notice a temporal loss, a volume loss in the temporal region or the frontal region in your brain. So if you don't use it, if you don't keep it activated, actually, uh, yeah, your brain could shrink. So yeah, they have like like I said, they have looked into uh, studies have looked into this what they call right now they have this term uh, they call the and in certain articles and several articles they call this the pandemic brain because uh, like you see in the like you have seen in the video just now watching the video just now uh, we have this uh, it could affect with stress stress could affect memory could affect concentration so actually the pandemic brain actually has something to do with how uh, people reported that they couldn't actually uh, concentrate anymore or things like uh, they couldn't uh, make sure they are focused on a certain task for a long hour, things like that. And therefore, they turn this, they try to look into all these changes or the effect. Uh, therefore, they turn this out, what they call the pandemic brain. brain sorry. And then the cave syndrome uh, is how actually after, because right now restrictions have been lifted in a lot of countries, our country not yet, but in other countries and in the UK and the US. And then they looked into how, and a lot of the population are getting vaccinated, right? So they look into how actually this thing can uh, now that restrictions are lifted, whether people are still willingly willing to go out, and they have noticed that uh, there is this that's what they call the cave syndrome, meaning people prefer to stay home after almost a year of staying home and staying away from people. Uh, a lot of them they feel anxious actually to go out again. So it's something like this, I have adapted to what we call this new normal. Uh, around two years. Should I actually still go out again? They are quite reluctant, even though they are they, they, they are vaccinated, they feel safe. But uh, some of them they still express that um I might I don't I don't feel like uh, going out and I can get anxious uh, going out or interact with people. So these are some of the uh, important things of uh, post-pandemic changes. But fret not, because uh, my next point is I try to of course bring out the positive side of all this. Our brain is plastic. Just now I mentioned how well, we are adaptive, right? So brain is plastic here. I uh, put pictures of uh, plastic materials here, but uh, that is not what it means here. It's not that your brain actually is uh, made up of plastic, but more like uh, the plastic word here means uh, your brain is flexible. Your brain is very uh, easily shaped, can be easily shaped and molded. So it can modify connections and rewire itself, just like how that environment can change your brain chemistry and change your behavior, and then your behavior change brain chemistry and your brain chemistry, the feedback loop game. So this one, uh, if you know to take the correct steps or you know uh, what to do, you can modify connections and rewire itself in response to different changes. So yeah, we are resilient. Uh, what we call this impact, whatever impact that they are, uh, whether good or bad impact, uh, these impacts, they are changeable. The impact or the negative impact, uh, what we call this uh, pandemic brain, they are reversible. So what we can do, first thing is, uh, like the video suggested just now, actually the video, they didn't focus on just uh, uh, in the current situation, they focus on uh, a situation that we face in during, during, during the pandemic. But it's just that whenever we are in uh, chronic stressful or a continuously stressful situations, what we can do, uh, even when you, are, you don't feel stressed, these are some of the things that you can do. Take deep breaths, yeah? uh, be mindful, what they call this meditation uh, or breathing exercise. What it means here, be mindful, is to be like, because as we all know, we take so much time uh, online, we spend so much time online now, right? Sometimes we can get, we, can, we could have traveled the world, uh, even though you stay in the same place. Uh, you could have, uh, 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 you could have gone to the, uh, what is that, the Tokyo Olympic to watch the games and then in the next minute you could have gone to somewhere else and then on the next minute you could have uh, been paying attention to your lectures. So when you are getting sucked into uh, these uh, different uh, environments, be mix a mixture to come back to your present moment and be mindful. So sometimes when you are too engrossed in your assignments and you get uh, uh, too focused, try to come back to your immediate environment to notice what is around you and take deep breaths, yeah, through your head. So this would actually help. Sorry. And another thing is to exercise because exercise can increase uh, neuroplasticity. So plastic, right, adaptable, how our brain can change. So neuroplasticity meaning uh, when, yeah, just like just now when we also talked about how hormones, the release of endorphin, they can make us feel good, right? Exercise actually has the same effect because when we exercise or sometimes when we go for a walk, just a brief walk or stretching it out or just uh, to, to take a run or go for a job, a quick job, 
actually your body will release, your brain will release endorphins and also dopamine. And we know these hormones, they can actually help you uh, feel good. Yeah, they boost your mood, they regulate your emotion and mood. And last but not least, uh, the very simple step is uh, to listen to music. Yeah, uh, music that you actually enjoy, no, not some loud music that you don't find uh, entertaining or you don't find enjoyable. So this one again, we have uh, hormones uh, coming into play again because when you listen to music that you enjoy, it promotes oxytocin production of love hormone, meaning you will feel a uh, the cuddling feeling, you will feel uh, uh, the maternal bonding. Yeah, those, those kind of things, the good feeling, and also lower your cortisol, the stress hormone levels. And the other thing, uh, how I talk about we should socialize, right? So try to re-socialize, even saying hi to your neighbor, as simple as that. You don't have to uh, spend 15 minutes long talking to them, but just making eye contact, socialize to your fellow human being actually can uh, help you feel better as well because environmental enrichment is again associated with neuroplasticity. So yeah, come to the last, last slide here. Uh, to adapt is to survive. Yeah, like I said, we are the, one of the most intelligent beings on earth. So we are good at adapting. And of course, I believe we will get there. Yeah, and of course our brains will too. So try to incorporate all the uh, simple tasks that we talked about just now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, hope is not lost yet. So have faith, not all hope is lost. Right, be, be, have hope, have faith, and I believe we can survive through this. And our brain can, can, can adapt and also be, 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 be better. Okay. Yeah, uh, that is the end of my presentation. I hope you have found something useful and insightful. Uh, and I think I will pass the floor back to our moderator, Ms. Idelin. Thank you so much, Dr. Chai. It was a very uh, informative sharing. I capture a lot of words, uh, like a motivational word. Um, and I have clearer picture now on how does my brain uh, functions according to a specific situation. And I can't lie to you that uh, I have a lot of questions triggered in my mind currently, but that's okay uh, because I can slot those questions into our next session or later on. But uh, for the next sessions, what I will do is uh, I will also invite uh, some of our students' representatives uh, to make our session more interactive. So, yeah, I'm sure they have a lot of thoughts uh, being a student and person on the matter of handling mental health during this pandemic. And maybe they would also like to take this opportunity to seek some uh, clarifications personally from you, Dr. Chai. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let me welcome back our beloved Mango and our students' representatives from University of Reading, Malaysia, Amanda Sari Panama and a representative from Netherlands Maritime University College, uh, Muhammad Irfan, a representative from Multimedia University, Nur Farah Nadia, and a, a representative from Raffles University, Wei Yi. Hello. Hello, all right. Welcome to the session, ladies, and the only guy, Irfan. All right, so are you guys ready? Yeah. Good. Okay, so who is going to start first? Ladies first or the only guy first? Um, maybe I'm looking at you, Wei. You, you want to start first? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, hi, Dr. Chai. So I would like to ask about because in Malaysia, we are all say that family shame must not be revealed. So how can the family of a mentally ill person not hide or resist their family and accompany the patient to face with their problems? Okay, thanks really for your question. Actually, uh, this is quite a, a critical question uh, especially and relevant to our current culture, yeah, especially in Malaysia, the collectivistic culture. Uh, to answer your question, I believe, uh, breaking the stigma is the most important thing associated, the stigma associated with these health conditions. Yeah. So because health in general, when we talk about health, actually it encompasses both uh, mental and physical aspects. So as we have learned just now, actually our mental health, how we feel stressed or, 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 or what is that, depressed and things like that, is closely related to the condition of your body, especially the brain, which is also one of the organs in your body, right? So instead of seeing someone with a mental illness to be uh, not right in the mind or to, to discriminate against them, uh, maybe try, of course it can be difficult, see as another ailment, as you would see 
a, a, a headache or a stomach ache, a fever. And yeah, that is like my, my take on this. Thank so you. That, yeah, increase awareness. So, where you do you have any further questions? No, I have get my answer. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chai. I agree with you. That that sounds simple, but it actually requires a lot of emotions. Just imagine if I were the family or or a fan of the person, yeah. So, uh, so Dr. Chai, I think we just need to act normal, even though we knew it the situation. Uh, but we just straight away to the action, you know, like um, um, taking them for a walk and all that, right? Thank you. All right. Um, who wants to go next? Maybe the only gentleman here, Irfan. Okay, so yeah, thank you, Miss Delin, and hello, Dr. Chai. So thank you for joining us today. And so for my question is, uh, since most of the students uh, right now are currently facing the pandemic, and therefore they had to go for online classes instead of physical classes, there is a tend to an increase of work because there is a perspective that since we are at home 24-7, we have got more time to do our job. So for my question, what are the most common ways or steps that we can take to ensure that we are not emotionally stressed, which may lead to mental breakdown. Hmm. Okay, thanks Irfan for your question. Uh, you are right actually, we spend so much time online now, especially after the pandemic hit. So literally, uh, our physical space could be the same day in, day out on the internet. I mean, our physical space could be the same day in, but on the internet itself, we could have traveled the world, just like I talked about in my presentation, from the Tokyo Olympic to the sitting in the parliament, and then back, go back to your online lectures or go back to your work. So it is important actually for us to set boundaries and have a routine. So something like, oh, 1 p.m., usually I should get my lunch. So it is 1 p.m. now, I should go and get my lunch. Be mindful again, come back to the present moment. So at the evening, uh, I should, in the evening, I should go for a walk. Then you go for a walk. Don't let the environment manage you, but manage the environment. Because, of course, we could have spent all, all time in, in, front of the, in front of your computer, but that is our environment, right? But don't let it manage you. Yeah? Mm. That is my suggestion. That's the tip. Don't let the environment manage us. We manage you. Okay. Irfan, do you have any further questions? I know. Thank you. That was a very good advice. Thank you again. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Dr. Mm -hmm. Chai, I think the same approach and advices are applicable uh, to, to all, not only to students, right? Yes. Especially, yes. especially during this uh, pandemic, you know, parents who need to handle, <laughs> yes, and, and especially parents who need to handle a back to back online meetings and to look after the kids at the same time. So, yeah, I can, I can imagine. So, yeah, good advice. Thanks again, Dr. Chai. So, let's proceed to the next question. Farah, are you ready? Oh, hi. Good morning, uh, doctor. Thank you for being here. Hope you're doing fine. Uh, like what Irfan said, because we're the students are mostly learning online, so our brain is adapting to this new normal and it's continuing to adapt. So do you believe that there will be a difference in the next generation of graduates getting into the workforce? Okay, Farah, thanks for the question. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to be fine. I'm still um, fine, so I hope you are fine too. Uh, okay, I do believe there will be a difference because uh, the pandemic has changed the world, right, and marked an important event in history. So, but it, just like how my last slide just now, we said to adapt is to survive. So we will continue to, continue to adapt to the states of the world, no matter what we are facing right now. So now that restrictions have been lifted, actually, they have looked into a lot of post-pandemic changes and from our mental well-being to the shift in our worldview of how we view this world, our perception of the world, and the push in our medical and technological advancement, maybe uh, online learning, yeah, uh, online technology, the internet. So you will notice what areas have flourished and uh, growing in importance, especially for uh, technology, uh, the, the AI, or even or also essential workforce, yeah, like your medical, our healthcare workers, yeah, areas like that. Maybe, yeah, that is my. Uh, yeah, my 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 understand only uh, my opinion on that. If if I may add, Dr. Chai, to touch a little bit about change in our life, mm -hmm. um, be it in the process, system, behavior, we as a human being, I think we we tend to reject the changes because for any change means you are about to to do something out of your comfort zone. So we mm -hmm. don't feel comfortable about it. But if you set your brain to try and give time 
uh, to accept the changes, it will gradually be part of your life. And because um, it, it will eventually getting um, comfortable doing it. Yep, yes. just my two cents. All right, the last representative, Amanda. I know you've been waiting so long. Hello, <laughs> thank you, Miss Edelman. And also, hello, Dr. Chai. Good morning, everyone. Um, my question is more of a very general output. So if you see someone that's uh, visibly struggling, clearly they're not doing okay, but you are the loved one and you're worried for them. What kind of advice would you as the loved one give to the person that's struggling? Okay, uh, thanks Amanda. Yeah, this is actually very, uh, uh, yeah, very relevant question, uh, very serious question also. Uh, I would say, because yeah, like I said, a lot of, a lot of us have been uh, struggling throughout this pandemic maybe. So uh, what I would suggest is that nothing professional here, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but of course if this serious condition uh, is seriously or uh, visibly struggling, visibly distressed, uh, we should always seek professional help. Try, try to reach out, yeah? don't, don't, don't keep everything inside. But uh, yeah, to address uh, what Amanda has asked, uh, what I would suggest is as what we can do as uh, common beings or as a friend, as a family member, to not be very direct and blunt about uh, approaching this, the, uh, the, the, the issue here. Very, not, don't, don't be too straightforward. Because uh, if let's say you can see that you're one of the family members, they, they, they are struggling, uh, you don't just go and go out and go and tell them, oh, uh, Please don't always get so sad if you just go and get some help, uh, things like that. So no one likes to be pointed out of their weakness just like that. So the defense mechanism, uh, all of us, we have it as a way to protect our pride, right? So what we say is that, yeah, again, to not be direct and blunt and take small steps. Try to incorporate what we can do. Try to incorporate some simple activities. Uh, what could I share just now? Just uh, drag them around to ask them, drag, drag them together to ask them to go for a walk or ask them to uh, play them some uh, enjoyable music, yeah? Uh, and try to maintain socialization, of course, yeah, because companionship actually helps a lot. So try to make sure that you uh, continue to engage them socially and be a supportive friend, uh, be a supportive family member, yeah? Uh, I hope that helps. That was very insightful. I've never thought of it that way. Instead of like being brash, mm -hmm. it's like kind of suddenly trying to push them to be better or feel better. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, since we are talking about that, Dr. Chai, maybe uh, I should take this opportunity to inform the audience that uh, we will promote and create awareness about mental health first aider in our third series of Happy Clinic. And good news to Educity Skanda, we might also set up our internal pool of mental health first aider. We will talk more about it. Uh, so stay tuned for the third series of Happy Clinic. Yep. Um, so do you have any other food, uh, any other question, ladies and gentlemen, or Dr. Chai? Mm, fine. Thanks for all the questions again. Yeah. Thank is, you. Uh, it's like cool for me as well to understand how you guys are doing. Yeah, th thanks to you, Dr. Chai, for helping our students with their questions. And um, thanks to all of you too for joining us. We hope there are some key takeaways that you can bring back to your friends and people around you. Um, yep, we'll see you again. Um, yeah, we are now towards the end of the session. And um, our next session is uh, the, the Q&A, live Q&A will be at the end of the session. So stay tuned for that. Uh, please continue to post your question and we will answer as much as we can. Um, but before that, over to you, Mango, for more exciting game. They are waiting for it. Thank you. Wow, that was a wonderful sharing session just now. And thank you all of, all of the guys and, and Dr. Chai and Miss Adeline and other students. And yes, I'm back. So let's have some fun. It's time for us to play a game, which is Yahoo. We have a total of 10 questions prepared in regards to mental health. And let's see who's going to be the leaderboard for today. 
And also we were awarding our happy kit to the top 10 winners of the Kahoot. So be a bit serious, guys. All right, I will share the screen from now on. Just give me some minutes. All right, before we end the game, we have now, uh, and you guys can uh, log into the Kahoot website, which is www.kahoot.it. I repeat again, it's www.kahoot.it. And then you can enter the Kahoot pin that is being shown on this screen right now. And a general reminder, please use your real name. If not your real name, then sadly we won't be able, able to award our winners later. Okay, from now on, we just wait for more and more participants to join in and then we can start the game soon. We have now have 29 participants and it's keep on growing. Is there anyone else joining? All right, we have now have 39 participants. I think we can start soon. Those who are trying to join, please join it soon. All right, I think I will start the game now. Here comes to our first question. Feeling of guilt, shame, and worthiness are characteristics of five seconds left. All right, good jobs, everyone. Most of you correct. All right. Our first winner is Anna. Let's see if there are any changes for our next round. Second question. Globally, how many people do not get the healthcare they need? Count from three, two, one done all right only eight persons answer correctly and at least half of the populations all right Let's see who's the winner all right our top is big boss all right let's continue Our 
our third question is what are the proper estimate costs that associate with serious mental illness? Wow, this time you guys answer mostly correct. Okay, good job everyone. All right, Big Boss still at the top. Hmm, smart. Okay. Question four, good health and well-being are associated with which sustainable development goal? Ten seconds left. All right. Okay. This time, everyone's not bad. Okay. Wow. Big boss still at the top. Hmm. But everyone did a great job. What is the leading cause of disability worldwide and is a major contributor to the global burden of disease? Ooh, wow, good jobs everyone. Okay, the rank is still the same. Big boss is the top. Number six, how many people will experience suicidal thoughts throughout their lifetime? Come on guys. Five seconds left. Hmm, seems like this question is quite tough. Only seven persons answer correctly. But everyone did a great job. Good job. Great, great, great. Ooh, this time Wei is the top. Ooh, okay. How are you, big boss? <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> okay. All right. How many times higher of the suicide case among men compared to women? Count from three, two, one. All right. Okay, most of you answer correctly. Okay, Weying, you are the top champion. Let's see, we have two questions left. Okay, guys, you do, did a great job. Okay, based on WHO, how many children and adolescents in the world suffer from mental illness? Hmm. Okay, it's one over five. Okay, weighing is remains her positions. And let's move on to our second last question. Stress can contribute to the following health problems. Except okay, I think this question seems a bit easy compared to last. Thirty answer. Okay. Okay, Wayne, you are still the first. Okay, our let's go to our last question. Come on, guys. <laughs> How many percent of people with depression in low and middle income countries receive no treatment? Five seconds left. 
Alright. Okay, seven answered correctly. Okay, here comes the third place goes to Wei. And our second place goes to Arvin. And our champion is Anna, woo! Okay, congratulations to three of you. Uh, everyone did a great job. Okay. Okay, anyway, the top 10 winners of this game will claim their reward later. My team will contact you through the, what's the Zoom chat box. So just be aware of that. Okay, guys, we have rewards. Okay, from now on, I will, uh, we will go to our second Q&A section. And uh, I will pass the floor to Miss Adeline. I will stop sharing right now. All right. Um, can you can you hear me? Okay. All right. Thanks, Mango. Some of the questions were quite tough, though. But anyway, congratulations again to those who participated and won the game. So I would like to welcome back Dr. Chai. Yes, Hi. we are now uh, entering a more serious and important session, Dr. Chai. I will pick some uh, questions from the audience, that, uh, the question that the audience have posted, and we will try our best to answer. Uh, but unfortunately, due to time limitation, I think I'll read out maybe about you know, five to eight questions, but fret not. The rest of the question, we will, it, will, it will be answered by our ground team in Q&A board, yeah? So maybe we can start with the first question. Okay. Uh -huh. Can I get the question? I think I can address to some of the Q and A's that I can see. Okay, all right, I can read it. Yep, uh, Dr. Chai. So, okay. yeah, uh, this is from Noor Amira Hidayah. Hi, Amira. Yeah. Yep. How to men? Hi, Dr. Chai. I'm Amira. I would like to ask several questions. How to amend? Sorry, how to mend our broken pandemic brain? As we know that life under COVID has messed with our brain and most of common mental health conditions were anxiety disorders and mood disorders such as depression and even PTSD. So that's the first question. Okay, uh, hello Amira. Yeah, thanks for your question. Uh, like we said, actually uh, our brain is plastic, right? So the impact is reversible. So. Uh, to man the brain, uh, what we need to do, what we can do is uh, some of the things that I suggested just now. Uh, we can do breathing exercises, keep yourself in a good mood. Yeah, but how to keep yourself in a good mood unless you have all these hormones, right? I mean, the, 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 go back to the loop again, the feedback loop again. So you can uh, do exercise, uh, listen to your listen to music, do things that you enjoy, find hobbies, yeah? and also a very important thing is to interact with people actually to reach out and just talk to people. Uh, it could be strangers, even uh, uh, the cashier at your, or when you run your, or when you have your grocery runs. Yeah, all those things, I believe, uh, they will help to make us feel better again. And then uh, our brain chemistry can go back to its uh, normal level or optimal level, hopefully. But for, of course, this is a very complicated uh, issue. Uh, yes, uh, it's yes. not as simple as that. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Thanks. Uh, and she has question actually. So I would like to ask, how does respiratory disease lead to neurological and psychiatric effects? In other words, how COVID and other viruses affect our brain? Wow. Okay, yeah, this is uh, very relevant actually, because uh, yeah, actually they have uh, recently, studies have published how COVID-19 can affect our brain. Uh, then, then, and, and then they reported actually brain cell damage uh, even after your, your, uh, when you look into all these uh, patients that have actually recovered. Uh, so uh, during the acute phase, they noticed some cell damage and also uh, actually it, uh, what is that? Yeah, it, uh, I'm unsure of the reason why, but speculation is that it could be an inflammatory response. So uh, the injuries to the blood vessels or even to uh, what we call the blood clots. 
So actually, with these studies, they look into all the cell nucleus from the nerve cells from your brain, from the frontal cortex, and then they notice yeah, there might be some uh, inflammation and also some, something of suggestive of uh, some symptoms or some uh, presentation similar to what they would see in patients with neurodegenerative disorders. So actually, uh, of course, a lot is still a lot is still being done right now. A lot of research are still being done right now. But what we can do is that uh, try to stay safe. Yeah, don't get yourself uh, affected because they don't know the long term effect actually uh, to your cognitive function to your brain function. So actually, uh, current evidence actually shows that there might be some uh, effect on neurological or psychiatric effect actually uh, with COVID nineteen. Wow. Okay. It's, it's complicated, yeah. Um, but it's your forte, doctor. So yeah, um, I can't comment much on that. So yeah, uh, we have the second question. Um, hi, doctor. Mm -hmm. Is there any recommendations for resources on breathing techniques and meditation classes? Breathing tech. Oh, okay. Uh, I believe a lot of apps uh, is available. Uh, uh, free online apps. You can just go and search for some of the apps there uh, uh, on your phone uh, from App Store or even online. So, yeah. Yes, so that is what I would suggest uh, with recommendation for resources. Uh, because basically, uh, this breathing technique is more like guided meditation. They will just guide you through how to uh, breathe properly or how to dip, take deep breaths or for how long, things like that. And I would say there is no one, uh, one true way to do it. So, yeah, you can uh, browse around your, your, your app store and yeah, there are a lot of apps available. For me, actually, previously when I started, I, I, am a, I, I practice meditation myself. For me, myself, actually, I use this app called Calm, but currently I, I don't uh, subscribe to it anymore. But yeah, uh, if you are wondering, this is one of the apps that I use, a meditation app called Calm, C-A-L-M. Okay, thanks, thanks, Dr. Chan. Maybe we can, you know, publish something after this uh, article on or, or uh, announcement. Then we can include that as well, uh, just for sharing. All right. Um. So for the next question, how do we overcome peer pressure or stress, and be mindful? In record, something like maybe someone is performing better than you, and you compare it because I believe that comparing is only human nature. Yeah, you're right. But again, to you, Doctor. Yeah, I think it is good that you are getting aware of this, that, that comparison, comparison is a human nature and then how can we overcome this? So meaning you actually find this uh, uh, distressing already, like uh, this is quite stressful. I, I don't want to get uh, pressured by my peer. But uh, yeah, I think it would uh, start with you. Everything will actually have to start with you, that you have to uh, have this mindset that, okay, I should stop uh, comparing myself to others because why not I compare myself with my past self? Has I become, have I become better over the years? Uh, have I, have, uh, am I satisfied of my current uh, situation, uh, current current condition right now? Uh, yeah, satisfied with my uh, achievement right now. If not, then why not you improve on those instead of comparing yourself to others? Yeah, that's that's what happening nowadays. Yeah, that's that's realistic anyway. Uh, good question indeed. Yeah. So I think that's all, uh, Doctor Chai. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's time for us to wrap up. Yeah. Um, yeah, so there, there, there are so many, so many new things that I've learned today. So I, I hope the audience found the same. Uh, it was full of fact and information that we have uh, heard today related to this pandemic. Um, so if uh, I can recall correctly, Dr. Chai, the title mm -hmm. of your presentation just now was Understand How the Pandemic Impacts Brain Function and Mental Health. And there was a question where, um, uh, there was a question there whether is it fact or fiction. So I think I can summarize it now that yes, indeed, pandemic impacts brain uh, function and mental health. It's not a fiction. It is a fact. All right. So uh, you also mentioned about uh, uh, that brains are malleable and respond to environmental changes. And in order to adapt to that, uh, we should incorporate a simple tasks in our life uh, to make our brain healthier. And it is also very important uh, to do, a, to do a, a physical and breathing exercise. Yeah, Dr. Chai, uh, mm -hmm. you just mentioned it again just now. Um, you know, like just a simple walk will do. And other simple activities that can help is uh, like listening to music, meditation, 
uh, and socializing. So I knew during this lockdown, we are not encouraged to, to, to meet people, but we can do it online via WhatsApp. See how we meet each other right now. Um, so try to constantly talk and connect to people, your friend and your family. So in the end, what we want is just a healthy mind and a healthy brain, right? Um, so Dr. Chai, do you have any last word? Mm, I would say, yeah, have hope, everyone. <laughs> yeah. uh, stay positive because it could be difficult, but yeah, that is very important yeah, to, to make sure that our mood and our, uh, our brain, brain is healthy, a healthy mind, a, a, a healthy brain, a healthy mind. Healthy brain and healthy mind. Yep, yep. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Chai. I personally and on behalf of Edustice Panda would like to thank Dr. Chai Wenjia for joining us and making our program more meaningful today. Uh, and not to forget, to all of you who's, who's watching us, uh, thank you so much for spending your Saturday morning or afternoon uh, with us. Uh, till we meet again, over to you, Mingo. Okay, thank you for Dr. Chai and Miss Adeline. Uh, and here we go to the end of the events. And we all know that we have been going through mixed kind of feelings and emotion time to time. And I know at this time being, it's hard for us, but no worries. That's why we are here for this special talk sessions, which will help you to get some insights on the well-being of mental health. But before we end, let's check out the winners of our happy video commissions. Enjoy, guys. On the street of a house in which she stayed And my diary's full of your name on every page Cause I read to make you fall in love with me I'll try and try again one day you'll see Your hair's under my pillow so I sleep And I'm dreaming of you leaving roses on my feet I'm obsessed with you in a way I can't believe you see, it's hard to define what is happiness, especially during COVID times. No matter how bad things are happened to this year, hmm, until I remember what makes me happy. <laughs> my family and also my friends. Drawing, music, food. My friends and family, K-pop, food, money, anime, K-pop, my family and friends. When you wipe your tears, do you wipe them just for me? Okay, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. And let's announce the top three winners for our happy video completions. The third place go to Fadishus. Uh, what? Sorry, uh, it's Fad uh, Fadishus. Sorry. Yes, Fadaus. So let me raise a toast to the girl I love most in the whole world. Please don't say my name. Please don't say my name. Darla. Instead of fixing problems, I just run away. I save it for another day. Or at least that's what I'll say. Rather push them down than fight them face to face. I wish I could just erase them. I hope I somehow miss I left my delusions, I find them amusing, it might be confusing to you. Now that I'm over the hill, you want to say how you feel, crazy to think that you still call me psycho, you want to talk now.
Okay, sorry guys for my mistakes. Uh, hope you guys don't mind. And congratulations to our top three winners, which is uh, Fadish and Admi and uh, Fatins. And that is the end of our sessions. So hope you guys take care and stay safe. Thank you all for being here with me throughout the sessions. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the day and please stay tuned, uh, stay tuned for more upcoming events. Hope to see you guys later. Bye. This is where it begins. A place where she can dive into her dreams and swim against the current to reach her goal. It is a starting point of a journey to explore uncharted territories, to use new knowledge for the best of mankind, Immersing in sustainable lifestyle Where you can feel the breeze on your skin It's times like this that makes you feel alive A time to create A time to capture precious moments Dreams are no longer just a dream, but the beginnings of a new reality. This is where I harness my potential. This is where I explore possibilities. This is where I expand my mind. This is where her story begins. This is Edu City.
Oh, oh, oh.